Good evening. Good evening. I will be brief. I uh, just want to show you a little antenna I knocked together. Nothing earth shattering or brand new about this. I just put some stuff together. I thought I'd show it to you because you might like the idea of it. It's a good incoms antenna which ties in with what John's going to be talking about tonight. It's also nice for field day. Uh, I wanted an antenna with 10, 15, 20 meter coverage. I wanted to not have to use a tuner with it. I wanted it to be portable for field day and MCOMs. I wanted it vertical so I get a nice low takeoff angle without trying to see how high I can get the antenna up in the tree. We've all had that fun on field day, and it's not my favorite thing. Uh, no trees required. Simple setup and takedown. Simple to build and cheap, which is always a good thing. This is a picture of it. And this is the plumber's nightmare I made up to hold it up. You can use anything that works for you. I just used a large piece of PVC. The rest of this part up to here is a tree trimmer. I took the head off the tree trimmer and opened the shaft up. It's non-metallic. Then I put some PVC on top, and then I just came out with an elbow, and then it just has a T on the end, and I put the rope on the T and use that for a pulley. Very simple. On the ground, this is a lousy picture, but if the radials actually are tape measures, Harbor Freight tape measures. Nice and cheap, three bucks a pop, you can get 12 of them. And they make dandy radials. Uh, there's, a, there's another picture of it that's a little closer up. You can see the, the traps in it. And then it has, you can see the rope I used to hoist it with. The construction, I just used a 16 gauge Radio Shack indoor outdoor speaker wire. It's dandy for making antennas. Comes on a spool of 100 feet and is zipped in twin. Uh, copper wire center loop. You'll see that in a minute. The radials are just uh, 12, 25 foot tape measures from Harbor Freight. I soldered a, a short lead and an alligator clip to it, and I figured it out so it would be about 4 inches to the point where it clips on the loop. So that way I can just add four inches to whatever I'm doing here and that gives me the, the size of the, you know, where to calculate the radial. Yeah. I use four radials per band. So I had 12 radials out there, they're all quarter wavelength. There's a picture of the loop that's just a piece of heavy gauge copper wire with an SO239 bolted onto it. And then there's the antenna lead soldered to the center. And that's what the radials look like laid on the ground. You can see the loop there. There's the SO239, the feed line. And then all the radials are just out, all 12 going around it. There's a close-up of one of the traps. And there's lots of different ways to build traps and hook them up. I personally like to use bolts and with an eye. I have eyes on the inside also on the wires there, eye terminals. I just soldered them on there. Nice, easy, very neat simple way to do it. There's lots of websites that show you how to design traps and build them, so I won't talk about that much except just to say I detune them 500 to 600 kilohertz <coughs> below the band. Okay, the reason for that is from what I've been able to gather, that's a good way to go because if you put them in the band, the traps tend to be more <coughs> You tend to lose more of your signal if you put them in the middle of the band. So I put them below the band and it works really well. They have plenty of cue and they work fine. Uh, I use the coax trap program by VE6YP and it tells you exactly how to wind the thing for whatever frequency you want. I built it with PVC pipe and coax and I just use RG58CU coax. You can use a lot of different kinds. And then you dip the trap with a dip meter or an antenna analyzer. I'll show you a picture. <coughs> And then uh, the other thing is you adjust it, once you dip the trap if it's a little off, you can adjust it by moving the quills farther apart or squeezing them closer together. And you just put tape over them to hold them. Keep in mind the tape will change the frequency a little bit. It tends to lower it. So keep that in mind. But I had to take one of mine apart <laughs> and redo it. This is a picture of the coax track program. It's free. Just You can Google it on the internet. And you just enter the frequency you want and see this was my 10 meter trap and I detuned at 500 megahertz or so I attempted. That's the size of a piece of one outside diameter of one inch plastic pipe. 
I entered the type of <coughs> coax I'm using and the program did everything else. So it told me how many turns, just about four turns. And it told me how long the coax was going to be. And it gives me all the other stats on there too. And then there's a picture of dipping it. Uh, I just used my MFG antenna analyzer. It has, I have the optional dip meter attachment. You just put it on top of the analyzer <coughs> and you just sweep the frequency and you'll see the SWR meter take a sudden sharp drop when you hit the resonant frequency of the coil. And so then you know you got it right. And I got a close up here, you can see, whoops, it's a little hard to see, but it says uh, 27.408. So it's very close to 27.4, that's 600 kilohertz down, that's fine. So that worked fine for that track. And when I put it together, here's the assembly and the results I got with it. You assemble the antenna and you, you of course, trim it using an antenna analyzer. Uh, the first thing you do, of course, you want to do the uh, 10 meter element first and then work your way up. And here I have the actual links. They're kind of weird. They're not what you'd think. The traps do affect the links of the elements. I had 92 and a half for 10 meters, 12 and a 5 eighths for the 15 meter element. The next piece is that short, but it tunes perfectly. And when I, I, so I recommend, of course, you cut everything long and use an analyzer and tune it carefully. Your mileage may vary, but this is what I got. Whoops. Uh, no tuners needed. And here's the actual results. 10 meters, I go from 28 to 28.5, below 2 to 1, which is pretty much all the 10 meter band I ever hear being used. I got the whole 15 meter and the whole 20 meter band, no tuner. Works fine. Uh, I actually had some QSOs. It was late in the afternoon and the band conditions weren't quite as good as you might want, but on 20 meters I was talking to a guy in New Mexico with 5 watts. And I was talking to a guy in Washington State with 20 watts. And then on 15 I talked to a guy. I had to crank the power a bit because it was a little later and the band was dropping, but uh, I, he gave me a 5.9 from Oklahoma on 15 meters. And this is all set up in my backyard talking on my radio city. Was that on sideband or CW? I was using sideband. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was using voice. This is all phone. Yeah, it would be even better if I was using digital mode. I don't do CW much, but uh, I do a lot of uh, PSK31 and stuff like that. Uh, if you are interested in this at all, I, I, put, I posted this on the internet, and you can find it there at the SHARP website. And that's the Sheriff's Amateur Radio Program of which I am a member. We have our own little website there. And you just have to, whoops, you just have to say sacsharp.org slash triband hyphen and And that will find you if you're interested in this presentation. <coughs>